I got seven o'clock, so I'll call this meeting to order. Um, go down through the roll call. Looks like, let's see, I'm here, Lauren's here, Rosalie, Tommy, Allen, Avery, and Rick. So everyone's accounted for. Um, if everyone kind of had a chance to look through the, the minutes, we got them a little late this time, but thank you, Rosalie, for doing them anyway. Anyone see any corrections? Okay. Have a second. Second. Motion by David. Second by Lonnie. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Yes, they are approved. All right, Rick, you're up first. What you got for us this time? Uh, put together a listing of uh, should be in the package. Yes, sit on the back of the agenda. When I went through the different districts in the there's zoning ordinances, there are uses specified individually that it didn't make a lot of sense to me why they were picked out as one use as a opposed to a category of uses. And I tried to assign those individual uses to the category that they would be best suited to. And some, we may want to give some consideration whether they need to stay there or not. And there are one or two that are, can be pretty problematic. Um, C1 in the county to start at the top. I didn't have a good feel for what professional services was talking about, but it fell closest to financial consultative administrative services. You know, signs and billboards are typically an accessory use instead of being named as a, a permitted use in the district. Signs that go with the use are considered accessory uses. Billboards, they are they're sort of standalone if you have a billboard application, they're not generally bound by zoning, but we can leave those in there. I just thought signs need to be specified as a se uh, separate as an accessory use. Electrical goods, wholesale sales, drugs, several other items, general retail, grocery, general retail, motor vehicles, vehicle, vehicular craft and related. Service stations, automotive servicing, apparel, again, general retail, dry goods, general retail, drugs, chemicals, allied products, wholesale sales, farm products, wholesale sales, and transportation, communication, utility service, except solid waste, is auto servicing and maybe communication and utility fall to a different category. But that's, that's sort of my take on C1 in the county. Uh, C2 is that way also. Uh, civil defense facilities, administrative services, those are typically not limited to an industrial facility. Uh, it's kind of old to talk about civil defense facilities, mm -hmm. but typically that's a product of the county government or the state putting some installation in it's not even subject to zoning. So, you know, leaving it as an M2 specified permitted use didn't make a lot of sense to me. And if there are administrative services permitted, then that would fall into that. And that makes sense that they be uh, addressed and permitted in M2, but not simply civil defense facilities on their own. Lumber and wood products I had a hard time chasing that one down, but it looks like it falls into limited manufacturing the way it's addressed. It's, it's called lumber and wood products manufacturing. And I found cabinets and other items that are considered limited manufacturing and figured that that would well, they also that. fall into a bit of sawmills. Well, sawmill is different. It's it's a it's an agricultural process, mm -hmm. and we may want to commit to a, a different look at sawmills because it, you can do sawmilling on your property mm -hmm. if you use your timber mm -hmm. and it's not subject to 
anything. It's a it's an ag use. Mm -hmm. But if you do limited sawmills and bring in wood to turn out as a product, yeah. then you probably need a uh, that's a manufacturing that's all. Yeah, yeah, set of set of uh, specifics that go with that. And that can be an agricultural district and, and just set it up as a like a site plan approval that if you do a sawmill here, you do X, mm -hmm. depending on, on what kind of sawmill it is. If it's a temporary, you know, they make them that you can bring in. I, I even saw one the other day, I think you can buy Harbor Freight. Mm -hmm. There are different levels of activity that you can generate from a sawmill, but, uh, you know, just saying that one product and you know, two is permitted use was a little bit limiting, I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, stone clay glass, intermediate manufacturing as a special exception. I think that needs to be uh, treated as a more heavy use than it is as a permitted use in M2 because that can generate a lot of dust and noise, heat, a lot of byproducts, and probably it needs to be limited to intermediate manufacturing and then as a special exception, that's, that's my suggestion. Uh, electrical distribution, limited manufacturing, transportation equipment, limited marinas and yacht clubs. Uh, that is less of an impact than manufacturing, but traffic and noise can be a consideration there. So it probably fits better into intermediate impact facilities that doesn't have to be limited to M2. I thought that was an odd treatment of a, of a marina. Uh, airports extensive impact because of noise and traffic and again signs and billboards accessory use and then m2 special exceptions i peel those out because uh telecommunication facilities and i've got some handouts on that we can talk about i think that's trying to be uh cell towers well you can't limit that you mm -hmm. a, a little a little and and as a special exception at m2 I thought was a little bit overboard because you want to promote, I would think you want to promote cell towers in certain districts where they wouldn't be uh, impediment to other uses around it. It wouldn't be a, a, a bad neighbor. Mm -hmm. And M2 special exception, uh, I, I suggest it be pushed out to the commercial districts as a, as a permitted use. And if you want to do it in residential, do it as a special exception at your own peril. <laughs> There's not a lot of ways you can turn the things down. Because as I'm as I'm thinking about where the cell towers are that I know of in Charleston County, none of them are on M2. Right. They're all either on agriculture well, hey, on agriculture. Yeah. No right. other ones. And my understanding when the last one came through planning, we were told we couldn't tell them where they could and couldn't put it. They were counted as a utility and they put with the demand for the service. It was an overreaching. I don't know if it was federal or state, but let me let me pass these around. I made copies of what the state says. Okay. This is that's how Tennessee code annotates. And the, the italicized part is what controls. Uh, the exclusion of location from local regulation does not preclude the exercise of reasonable municipal and county police powers, including but not limited to permit requirements, landscaping, off street parking, and setbacks. That's basically what you can control. Yeah, we can't control where they go, but we can control what it looks like. Sort of. Yeah. Within reason. Yeah. So, well, those are the things that are spelled out in the Tennessee code that you can address. So it shouldn't. So the only purpose of it being an M2, it's not to, I mean, because you can't exclude it from A1 or, or commercial or, no. or R1 for that matter. Um, so there's really no reason to have it in M2 then. I would promote it as, as a, a use permitted in M2, but also in the commercial district. Yeah, and added in those uses in those districts as a permitted use. And if you want to say anything about it in residential or agriculture, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have it as a special exception for sure. 
So you're saying to this to break the requirements that we already have for cell towers? Um, I think better do it. Just leave them mm -hmm. for C1 and, and M2. Well, you can do M1 or I1 for that. Um, and that way, if they were wanted to come in to a, and they wanted, you would just use those same requirements exactly. in that district also. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Not, and not as a special exception because if you drag it through the appeals process, the neighbors get notified. Sometimes they get involved and upset, and another handout. Uh, I think loaded so bad in that one. Yes. Uh, another one came out of Wilson County. And this is a two pages. Wow. First paragraph tells a story. Um, the decision must be in writing. There must be substantial evidence supporting it. There cannot be any unreasonable delay, and the decision must not amount to a total prohibition of service. It says it's only more lost on every count. Now, this is George Dean's take on it. This is oh, it's it's been on his website for quite a while. Ten years it looks like. Yeah, but it hadn't changed. I mean, nothing, nothing that affects it has changed in those yeah. years. So that goes back to the supporting. We can't tell anyone where it's going to go, but we can tell what it looks like when it gets there. On the ground, you can, I mean, if it's in a floodplain, I've, I've been able to turn them away from there with a floodplain. Well, but I, I that's an yeah. yeah, basically. Because that's the safety issue at that point. Mm -hmm. You yeah. would want a cell tower in the down in the valley of a flood on me anyway, I wouldn't think right. Like in Gallatin where they have that one over there. It looks, looks like, like a, a terrible it, it looks it draws more attention to itself looking like a fake yeah. pine tree. But that's yeah, they they can make we can tell them what it looks what it oh, needs to look like. Yeah. yeah. That looks so silly. But you can't tell them where to like um oh, for our current uh, limitations on cell phone towers, we make sure that the, the lot that they buy, the radius of the tower fall, you know, to, if it tower falls over, it's within the property boundary, that radius. And that's a requirement that, that we've done. So that, that we do have quite a few regulations as far as, like I said, the parking, you know, fencing around it, that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, I've, as long as I've been on planning, I've been told we can't tell them where to put it. We can just tell them what it will look like when they put it there. I believe you used to be you have one that would fall out completely. Now they be in the middle. Yeah, the the collapsible one. Yeah, that don't have to have a different plot. They're going the cell cell tower companies are going to come to you with their engineering studies showing where there is a lack of service. So that's the reason you can't say. You can't go X or Y. They've got the supporting information. And the only way you could fight that is if you had a countywide cell tower plan based on existing service and service needs and all this. You'd have to suffer the cost of that. And most jurisdictions are not willing to get the bill for that. Uh, I'm pretty sure this one is. Yeah, this is out of the Sixth Circuit, and we're part of the Sixth Circuit. So it's it holding for us as well. I'm going to be on our floating now. <laughs> so if it's if it's all right with everyone, I will I'll massage the ordinance where it mentions telecommunication facilities and we'll bounce that around and we can talk about it when we get to that point and choose. So so far, there's the, the two that are questionable, the professional service and the uh, civil defense facility, and then of course the telecommunication. Being listed in the special exceptions, the stone plating glass or the oh, in the stone, plate. yeah, you yeah, know, that's a big one. So, we'll just to kind of take this off, you know, in small chunks here. Um, any ideas, any comments on, on those items? What else we can want? So, I mean, 
So on those on those that we've already looked at now that are, are either questionable or can be looked at as being in the wrong place as far as moving those, uh, any suggestions on where they need to be moved? Should they be moved? What, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts, Rick? My suggestion is to take the heavy use, like, uh, for instance, stone plate and glass mm -hmm. that's a permitted use and move that into other uh, categories, other uses that are identified as intermediate, intermediate manufacturing and put it as a special exception, even in that district, because it's a, that's a bad, it's got a lot of side effects that may not be anticipated on the front end. It's pretty much just swapping stone and clay and glass with telecommunication. In effect. Does everyone understand the reasons? Yes. In the suggestion. Mm -hmm. And then on the professional services, the question mark there is just the the generality and unspecified. I couldn't find, I couldn't find a definition or a place to put it in the SIC listing. That's that's what's on the left is how those uses fall into the standard industrial code, the closest I can mm -hmm. come up with. And professional service is so broad, I couldn't tie that one down and civil defense facilities didn't show up either. So yeah. that's the reason I parked them in the categories that I did. So if we removed, the commission decided to remove civil defense facilities, just remove it from the M2. Does that, how does that affect if, if anyone ever wanted to come in with civil defense facility? Administrative services would show up somewhere okay. in, the, in the ordinance. And that would fall into those administrative service uses into that category, wherever that, whichever zone that happens to be in. Okay. But if another county, for instance, had property in trials of mm -hmm. and they wanted to put in something that would be categorized as civil defense facilities, they're a sister government. Mm -hmm. So they would have to go through the process that it mm -hmm. used to. It'd be like a county and city, you know, the, yeah. the county doing something inside the city limit. You can't say no. Yeah. They're a um, equal government entity. And so I would, I would just leave it as administrative services wherever they show up. Okay. I didn't understand why daycare centers were special exceptions in them, too. Uh, that's another one that I think you would want to promote and have a uh, better opportunity for daycare centers and commercial or even industrial zones, but I wouldn't do it as a special exception. You just have the site plan requirements and they meet those because they're already overseen by the state. Mm -hmm. you know, all you need to know is, you know, the size, location, can they park without backing up when a child might be going behind the car that and stuff. Mm -hmm. The only thing I can think of why it would be put as a special exception is just to, to limit someone wanting to put a daycare in heavy industrial. If that were the case, I would say take it out. Yeah. I would I would think it would be better as a permitted use even in M2 than, than a special exception. It's just one more step that you know that service I think would wouldn't benefit from having to slow down and go through a second step. Okay, so in this section so far, we'd be looking at the signs and billboards going to an accessory use instead of a permitted. The civil defense just being removed from M2. 
stone, clay, and glass being moved down to a special exception, and the daycare and telecommunication being moved up to permitted. What's that next perfect sense? Do I have a motion on that to direct him to make those motions? Go ahead, second. Second. All in favor? Uh, All opposed? It passes. So if you want to go ahead and make those adjustments in the final document. Correction. We didn't talk about correction of the detention institutions. We hadn't. I wanted to kind of get to okay. just take some small bites here. Okay. Um, okay, so moving on to corrections and detention institutions. We already have one of those over. Well, that's that is in two and Powercom, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yes. yes. I find that interesting because it says accept private. But if the state wants to come in and put a prison, we can't tell the state no. Exactly. So it doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Yeah, so that, that's very private. Yeah. yeah. Right. But a private detention facility isn't a special exception. The, the way it's worded here, I mean, it, it doesn't show up. Yeah. But if the state comes in and wants to do one, we can't tell them no. So it's not a special exception if it doesn't fit. So that one just needs to be removed altogether, wouldn't it? Or would you just move it up to permit it and? I would I would move it into the category of extensive impact facilities instead of naming it and calling out except private. I don't see any reason to distinguish between the two. If it's a correction or detention institution, I would just leave it lumped in with extensive impact facilities and leave all of those different types of uses as special exceptions and into. Okay. So then the way this would look on the M2, you would have you know the matrix of ex ex extensive impact facilities. And then under that, you could have all these would follow. Is that you know, let's let's talk about that? Yeah. This is this is a good listening. Well, that's a small print. Oh yeah. There's one that I work with. Huh? a lot of good things to say about the way it works and the way it was put together. And I, I consider it a gold standard for how we should treat the uses that are shown in the zoning ordinance. So we, we break out different uses in different categories by zone. And if you want to know where a use is allowed or not allowed, you have to thumb through the entire document mm -hmm. searching for it. And this way, you have one place to go to know whether that particular category mm -hmm. is allowed or not allowed in a particular zone. And we'll have several zones that run across the top. Mm -hmm. This runs from ag to industrial general, that's IG. Mm -hmm. And then you run down the list in usually alphabetical order through uh, the different types, residential, community facilities. And if you look near the bottom of it, extensive impact right above agricultural. If you run across that list, you don't see them permitted anywhere. Okay. So in this particular case, the city chose to say no to those uses being located anywhere in the city and be willing to fight the introduction of those uses into the city. Now, whether Charles County is willing to do that or not, I can't say. Now, did you ever get the copy of our matrix that we have yeah okay yeah and and truly it, it is just a uh, 
copy of what's in the different zoning districts. Yeah. This is what five pages long. It doesn't it doesn't group anything. No, it doesn't. It's just a, a compilation of those uses out of the zones mm -hmm. as they appear in the zoning ordinance. Yeah. So you you may say thumbing through some pages, but with a five page list, your effort is almost the same. You're not you're not saving much of in, in the way of efficiency. In this case, where I've listed these uses that are not in categories within the, the zones that are called out, you would have you would have one place to go to know whether a healthcare facility is located in commercial, industrial, residential. Where is it located? In the middle of community facilities. You just run across and you find Healthcare facilities in OP, CSL, CS, conditional, and CG, and permitted in a couple of industrial districts. But that holds for all the different categories. And all of these uses listed should be plugged into a category instead of just having an individual use out there. That's how it got to be five pages long. Yeah. And that's that's what I'm asking for help on is to give me the authority to put these uses into these categories along with the other categories that are already there and put them in a order and as few as we can do and it may not all fit on one page my goal is to have something like this that you can use that's compact and includes everything that we have in the zoning ordinance Like undertaking services, mm -hmm. we've got we've got that coming up in the city. It talks about funeral homes in a couple of places, yeah. and if you run across under, undertaking services, there's only a, a few places that it's mentioned, so it's limited to uh, CP, CGCS, and CSL. So four places in the city could you have a funeral home? And here, you have to know to look for it in C2 in the city. I'm not sure it shows up anywhere in the county. Should it? I don't know. I say the county and general services. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what this is doing. It's taking what was county and city, mm -hmm. and it will be reflected in commercial, I mean, in uh, general services and urban services. Mm -hmm. And we go down the list in the city if you'd like to. It's it's going to be it's going to read about the same. Um, office supply storage are called out as a separate use in C one in the city for some reason. Art stores, music stores, florists, all of those should be in general retail. That's the category they fall in. I would agree to that. Yeah. And while they were broken out separately, I can't say it just it makes that paragraph, that part of the zoning ordinance, more difficult to understand to read than it should be. And the whole point of this is to make it apparent to anybody that looks at it. Yeah, to simplify it. Yeah, where it belongs. Because I mean your your setbacks, your regulations for for all three of those. Um with the office supply stores, the book, art book, and music stores, the force, all that you have for general retail, they'd all be the same. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense widely broken out specific exactly. that way. Exactly. Exactly. And printing, publishing, and engraving, mm -hmm. that should be a limited manufacturing use. Yeah. That's the category it falls into. But here it's permitted use in a, in a commercial district. Because actually, our the printing that we have is in industrial. And this should be moved. Uh, I suggest moving that out of permitted and commercial in C1 and moving it into at least um, light industrial. Broadcasting, receiving TV stations, that's, that's easy. That's a commercial use. Same for radio? Yes. 
So what we would have to do is this would have to be something that we, as we're making the changes, moving them out of one zone into another, each one of those will have to, you know, it'll have to be voted on as a packet as you know, presented to the full commission to make those changes. Because um, I don't want anything to look like we're trying to, to sneak anything through. I want to be as much transparent as oh, what we're exactly. doing. I'm just um, trying to, I'm trying to make it obvious, to make it apparent that some of these uses are heavier mm -hmm. than they're currently zoned. Shown mm -hmm. and and they're not where they need to be, <laughs> and the county is not as protected as it needs to be because of it. Same thing in C2 undertaking daycare center again, that, that should be uh, used as promoted as a, as a service use. And it's called out as a separate standalone use. Group that in with personal and group care facilities like other similar personal service uses. And I think what some of this is, is what I've noticed is we're a very reactive county, not a very proactive. As something came up, an ordinance was made and just popped into place. My guess, yes. And, and there's no, no real forethought was looked at. I mean, group right. means or it was just... Add, keep adding to over time it just piles up. I mean, let me ask you this: Would a daycare center is this personal group care facility? Does that mean any different than a convalescent center? Not really. Not really. But in the effect of it, the the state reviews the childcare facilities differently, and they've got a different breakout. Different. Would they not fall under the same like guidelines as far as where they go to? Should be, yes. And there's special exceptions for um, home occupancy um, where you can have so many kids at your house. Um, State says it. Yeah. And we have run across something that I'd like to talk about later um, where I'm starting to find some of our ordinances are a little out of date and yeah. state law has made some changes and we need to make some updates to right. correspond with that. Okay. Um, if you've run across any of that, other than what I'm going to bring up under other, um, please okay. make a note of that so we can go ahead and start getting that before the commission and getting those passed. And okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> line to answer your question, was, I went on the state's website, on DHS and Secretary of State, and they break it into a roughly four or five categories, it looks like. Uh, providing child care for three or more hours per day to five or more children is a child care agency. A child care center is three or more hours per day for at least 13 children, not related. And then there's a group uh, uh, called Drop-In Child Care Centers, and it has varying uh, degrees for numbers of hours and numbers of children. Family child care at home is for three or more hours for at least five children, but not more than seven. And group child care is three more hours for 12 or not more than 12 or 15 if approved for three additional school ages. So if the state has all of those different categories that they license as child care facilities. The, the one that matters as far as a use that we wouldn't see would be up to four in the home that anyone can do. I don't, I don't know that the state takes that one too seriously. But, yeah. Looking down through the the different allotments that he's done for the different kind for setting up the matrix here. Does anyone see anything they disagree with? Yeah. I don't know why you would put tanner shop in an industrial zone. The what? Tanner shop. The very last one. Yeah. yeah it's general retail, but it's it's listed in uh, I one. Right. I don't I don't know. That's a mystery. Yeah, 
And I don't see TV and radio repair shop and electrical equipment appliance supply and supply store and repair being two separate entities, unless you're trying to say electrical and electronic. But still. Electronic repair, I mean, fixtures, it's, they're, they're, they're selling building materials and stuff. You know? Yeah. And this this whole effort was trying to get those individual uses into a category mm -hmm. and then show those categories logically where they belong in the different absolutely categories. yeah it's almost like it would be nice if you could just make this a clean slate and say okay this goes in and this goes there rather than trying to say okay it's like one of those puzzles where they're moving all the different squares trying to make the picture. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of the best way to present this to the full commission so that it's it's transparent, but it's easy to, for them to understand. Um, what do you all think? We just just taking it and putting it all together and dropping it in their laps and you give them a couple of months to to read over it if they even will and then vote on it i mean is that is that the approach we take or do we bring them chunks at a time and the thought process i see happening there is it'll just take one person getting disjointed mm -hmm. and the whole thing goes down the drain yeah I mean, this is in our ordinance. So, I mean, we already have this. It's not like you can take it away. It just needs to be put in the right slot, whatever really makes sense. Uh, in all honesty, if we put it together and stitch it together as one package, I think if we present it to them in multiple installments, there's going to be a great deal of confusion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let it all go at once. Let it all go at once. And if we need to, we may have the gentleman come and speak, actually. Yeah, so and Rich already said that he would do that. And that, and in which case, that could alleviate any of the mudslinging that could be seen. Yeah, if you don't do it all at one time, then pick it today. I know, and we'll be, this time next year, we will not be any further along. Okay. And and just keep in mind that anything you do here doesn't affect something that's already happened. Hundred percent commercial, and that would be a strong thing for you to bring out. It's it's already protected. So if you change something here, like moving uh, marinas and yacht clubs out of M2, and there's already one operating in M2, it doesn't affect that yacht club being there. Yeah, because they're grandfathered. Exactly. There's a lot of validity in having what they call an expert witness. Yeah. Rick and I had already spoken about that, um, how valuable it would be to have him present the package. Since he's the one working on it, he'll be the best one to answer the questions, the why. He's the one we hired to do it. And, and he is. Anybody wants to argue with that fact. And I can speak to an incident that happened last night at planning that this would greatly have helped. We'll, we'll try to get to that. Um, so to kind of move things along, Everyone seems to be in agreement on what's presented here and the locations for the matrix. So I'd like to take a motion. Um, like y'all want to just accept this as, as presented and let him continue on. Motion. Right. Motion in a second. All in favor? Uh, all, right. Uh -huh. all right. There you go, Rick. Very good. We appreciate your work and the direction you're headed. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your diligence. On Certainly. Your yeah. Um, now the next one, and <laughs> glad we're here for this too. Um, all right. So, our burn permit, um, that Mark had talked to us about, we finally kind of have some something in front of us here. Um, a couple of examples in your packet from other counties, other municipalities, um, which are much more extensive than what's proposed. Um, Mark, um, let you speak to Rick worked with me extensively on this. He had researched three other 
municipalities, Lebanon, Goodlitzville, National City. Um, we kind of gleaned what we thought were some better statements from those leaning a little heavier on the language found in Lebanon. Um, what we were trying to do was put some restrictions in place uh, against uh, open and free burning inside the urban services. Uh, what you don't want to happen is brush piles and trash piles and things like this being burned in high density areas where one fire can rather quickly jump from where it had been started into a neighbor's yard or into a neighbor's house, especially in the older parts of town where you've got small, narrow lots. Now you get out on the fringes of your urban services and it's really not too much different from general services, mm -hmm. quite honestly. Mm -hmm. But we didn't know how to draw that line any other way than to say urban services, general services. Um, you do get to the edges and it is much more sparsely populated as you go around some of those roads at the fringes. Um, and maybe a trash pile wouldn't be so bad there, but you've got to make a, a rather hard and fast rule somehow. The things we were trying to prevent are enumerated uh, in that. The things that we were willing to concede and permit are also listed there. So maybe there won't be too many questions about, well, can I do this or can I do that or what's the exception? Um, and then it does leave the overall exception uh, in the hands of the fire chief. Mm -hmm. Now, what this ordinance does not do that this committee, David, needs to address mm -hmm. would be we did not come up with a permit. Mm -hmm. We did not address whether or not there would be a charge for the permit. And we did not address uh, if you're going to grant permits, then that comes with an enforcement. Yeah. Who's going to enforce the thing? Uh, so that's kind of our jumping off place. We did draft this in a very generic ordinance format uh, so that it could be plugged into a template rather easy. We don't attempt in any way to uh, contradict regulations that the state forestry has. Mm -hmm. And state forestry is the overseeing agency for the general services area or the more rural parts of the county, farmland in particular. Uh, that would still work the same way it does uh, either an online or a phone call to a designated number can grant a uh, a property owner, a permit to burn a brush pile, for example, or a trash pile uh, out in the, the general services area. There are also restrictions uh, that pertain to air quality. EPA gets involved in what you can burn and what's permitted in the piles. Uh, so he references air quality regulations in the uh, toward the end of this so that we are not in contradiction with that. And one easy example is uh, asbestos shingles. Uh, because of the material that they contain, those are not supposed to be added to a brush pile or any type of burn pile, debris pile uh, at all because of the, the toxic nature of the fumes. So What's those like are science? regulated under the EPA air quality guidelines anyway. Uh, so we're not permitting or excluding or making exceptions for any variations to existing state law. Uh, 
Discussion, Rick, what did I leave out? Do you do you want to talk about ordinance 993? 993, we did find in old counterparts for minutes mm -hmm. that the they passed an ordinance <coughs> labeled 993, meaning it was done most likely September of 1993. Mm -hmm. um, at least the year is correct, if not the month. We never did, and in that, there is evidence through the minutes that it contains basically a fire plan, uh, and it had the restrictions that we were looking to find and resurrect, but no copy of that was ever found in anybody's files. So what Rick is doing by referencing that this would supersede, if anybody happens to have one uh, in their file at home and can produce it, then this document would supersede and replace that what was done in 1993. We couldn't nail down the year, but that was the best we ever got because beyond the minutes mm -hmm. reflecting it, we could not find a copy of it. Okay. Looked in five or six of the usual uh, places that records like that would be stolen. Nobody has it. I hadn't heard the statement that maybe it got caught up in the, the flood that Possibility, a lot of old city records uh, were stored in the basement of the old city hall, uh, where the sheriff's, uh, where Wayland's office is now. Uh, that has flooded a couple of times. Uh, some of those old town records were also uh, housed in some storage units across the street um, behind where our Dr. Bedrew's office is. Um, those have flooded in other years during floods too. So that is a strong possibility, uh, but yeah. irregardless of how it got destroyed, we can't find it. It just doesn't exist. So that's the, that's the fact. That's the fact. So we were attempting to put one back into place. Uh, regarding, regarding fringe. Um, would you define fringe by lot sizes? A reason I ask is like I live, I have a three acre lot. Yeah. And I've got a lot of rock on the back end of my three acre lot. And I've got a pile mm -hmm. of, of landscape trimmings that I brush that I have been piling up there because I don't want to burn it and have this man have to come down on it. So I am collecting it, hoarding it, hanging on to it, you know, as much as people don't like to look at it, I'm not going to let, I'm not going to burn it until I know the team. Um, so I, I, you know, I'd like to know how, how would we, Rick, how would we define what is, would be considered fringe by lot size once you get to a point where the lots are. Into that question, I'd like to, I'd like to see how it kind of fits into section two here of open burning as listed below may be conducted without a permit. Because that could be having your grandkids over for a weenie roast and there's recreational. And that falls in section two. So but if it's contained with a mesh cover on it, there's no permit required for that. But if it's open on the ground and it was like a campfire on the ground, now you could well, find yourself in violation. And correct me if I'm wrong, Rick, because the way it reads, as long as the use is for cooking of food, ceremonial or recreational, you know, you don't fire pits or outdoor fireplaces, you can do an open burn. Most of the time, those are small and contained, and um, especially when you would compare them to a debris pile that. Um, oh, yeah, mine's 10 by 10. Yeah. That's not small. But you even. If Solid. you go to a lot size, you've got a lot of your uh, older parts of town that were on small lots, Anchor. but you've still got quite a few homes here in the core part of Hartsville 
that are on pretty good sized lots. I'm sitting on solid rock up there. It's a bluff. You make a distance from your fire to probably line or I don't know. I, I don't know how you get around that part and that most likely will be your sticky issue uh trying to get this past. I hate to tell somebody got enough room they can't burn the leaves. I do too. Brush. I'll probably end up buying a chipper shredder before it's over done. If we're called <coughs> either by the homeowner or by a neighbor, I then by law we have to respond mm -hmm. and investigate and see what we've got. Uh, a lot of times if it is if piles out in the county especially are uh, safely maintained and there's a clear uh, area around them, homeowners present, uh, we just investigate and let the burn continue. Uh, there have been others where they're burning construction debris or things like that uh, here in town. Uh, we put them out. And when you look at the limiting of section one to what you're allowed in section, or excuse me, the limiting on section one, what you're allowed to do in section two, it looks like that's that's what you're limiting. You're limiting the commercial piles of being just refuge being burned. But it also includes limbs or brush. It does. Or it does. Mm -hmm. Now, talking with um, a few firefighters, um, from Metro and from Gallatin, um, I'm under the impression that if the limbs, the, the natural, um, how do they put it, the God-made materials are from your property, you legally can burn them on your property, but if you're collecting from other properties, bringing them to yours, you can't, that's illegal by state law. Is that your understanding, Mark? I have not researched that, but that logic would make a lot of sense to me. Because um, I know Gallatin has a one particular individual who has does lawn care and has been bringing stick, you know, trees and stuff to his property, and he's facing some legal issues over it right now. Um, because that was, and my concern, and but then the further I read it, it answers most of my concerns. Just the last weekend, I trimmed my bushes. I took the trimmings, put them in my fire pit, and I burned them. But that's not banned here. Correct. Because it was in my fire pit, and whether it was recreational or ceremonial, um, it's it's permitted without a permit. Um, so I don't see an overreach here in the limitations. Um, and the... the Restriction that the something. state puts into place uh, pertains to times of year mm -hmm. that a permit is required. And between October 15 and May 15 is when a permit is required by the state forester. Now, is that other months from summer leading into fall, it's fine to burn in rural areas or unregulated areas. So does the limits by the forestry, does that include in urban areas? No, well, if you have no restriction, then they will grant permits for the entire county. Okay. But if a city has restrictions, then they will honor those and create an exception zone. Okay. And that's what got us into this. We believed that we had, or the state believed that they, that Hartsville has a, a no burn restriction. Mm -hmm. But when we needed to produce a copy of it, we couldn't find it. Uh, okay. and, and I'm not sure how you address some of these small issues that you're bringing up. Uh, we just brought you a draft to consider. Uh, if you want to keep massaging this thing for a while before you sign off on something, that's fine. Um, and, and that's what I wanted to bring forward. I wanted to start the discussion on this, kind of get it before us. 
Um, because like Mark said, there's still, or do we want to do an actual permit to go with this? Do we want to put a fee with that? How are we going to do the enforcement of that permit? Well, the, oh, well, the enforcement of the permit, you buy the permit, and the, I see in the vernacular and some of it, they were good for three days. Yeah. That's what, 72 hours. When you, now, that's when it's one of the yeah. things we check as a fire department is when we are called for grass or brush fires out in the uh, rural parts of the county. Mm -hmm. We ask dispatch if there is a burn permit on file. Mm -hmm. um, so there would, if you do grant a permit, there needs to be a mechanism where it's reported. dispatch is reported uh, so that they can let us know on the radio while we're in raft. And is that a, a permit that'll be purchased through the fire department? It's up to you. And and if so, does the fee for that permit go to the fire department? I would think it should, because if they have to enforce it, they're incurring costs. Well, and I will say, too, that because we are a volunteer fire department and no one mans that department 24-7, mm -hmm. uh, there's nobody physically there to issue permits. But there's a call. So there's there needs to be an office. Yeah. The permit needs to be tied to an office somewhere where you've got people. And Rosalie you, smiles. Then well, I'm you. not giving it to you, but I'm just saying but there's nobody that, at fire station. So that, that leaves you three options. Either the dispatch down at City Hall, which I don't think Ray's going to go for that. There's Rosalie's office, which is overwhelmed for one person, which is probably should be a minimum of two, if not three. Or public works. They deal with permits and the accepting of money, and that could be an option. Um, Steve Solis is, uh, has a woman that that's, that's her whole job. Is it Cliff? But yeah, who did I say? Steve? Yeah. Cliff? Sorry, Cliff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Cliff has a lady, and that, that's most of her job is collecting fees for the community center, for renting out dumpsters. So that could probably roadblocks to collect money and all that stuff. She yeah. has you have to fill out those petitions. And... So that that might be a do it as under public works, and you know, it wouldn't be a complicated thing. No, and I, well, and I will tell you too that the permit you obtain through state forestry, there is no cost. Okay. It's just no, basically a notification that you, you plan to burn. So, so at this point, I know at this point, I mean, we just need to make some. We should probably start looking at definitions. Mm -hmm. So, what I'd like to do um, one, does anyone have an issue with any sections of what has been presented to us? I don't like the verbiage of one section. Of one. Because it, you can't do anything. You say it's what it, that's the way it reads. You can't. You can't even. I live in an area that I've got landscaping that I have to trim, mm -hmm. and I can't do anything with it. I certainly can't eat it. I don't have any goats. Well, those I, the HOA wouldn't let me have goats either. So yeah. What are we supposed to do? Well, they won't pick it up maybe twice and once a year, and then that's skeptical if that's actually going to happen. So, uh, yeah, and you don't I'm know when they're going to pick it up. And I, I'm limited as they don't call the office because it says so in there and ask them about when they're going to pick the brush up. So, I'm running out of places to do with it, and I, I reiterate, I can't eat it. Yeah, and so the pile is 10 by 10, it's getting a little taller, but I've got to keep trimming, or then I'll get a letter, that, or I won't get a letter, but I'll get, yeah, maybe really they pick, well, we have a really good stage away there. It, people, I got a couple of neighbors that notify me that my landscaping well, needs some work. I mean, but there's uh, there there are county maintenance yeah. requirements on your property that you still have to keep your hedges and your grass cut. And I mean, they're not just your HOA, but county regulations for that. But you can collect so, cards. You can collect cards as long as they're tagged and will move on their own power. Um, so <laughs> uh, well, okay, so and I understand the way why it was proposed so you you set up one and here's here's your you know nobody can do shall not do any and of this here, and then here's your exceptions down the list so i i get the format and yes when this goes 
So before the commission, they're going to read that first paragraph and they yeah. won't read the rest of it. And they're going to have a meltdown. They're done. They're done. They're done. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. We've run into that before with other things from other committees. Well, let me so back up and ask a different question. Okay. As a committee, mm -hmm. do you see a need to restrict open burning inside? And the urban service for commercial use, I 100% see a non for use. Yeah, because you're burning trash is illegal in the state anyway. So that's yeah, so that's why I'm getting we need to have some you know definitive guidelines. Yeah, that's why I, I want to know what you're talking about a good distance away from any you know, other building. And when there is no good distance, no, there there really is not. We've not just kind of we've yeah, seen it really jump. 30 and 40 feet, uh, and and you can take what looks like good green grass cover and there'll be enough dead thatching underneath it that it'll still race across the ground. And coming from emergency services, when Mark sends his reports of how many fires each month and what they were, 90% of them are brush fires. So I, I, see, the, I see the need for it, I do. Um, like I said, for the commercial, ban on open fires, 100%. I see that. I think where we're getting that gray area is what would be considered the, the cooking recreation ceremony. Right. I think that's where that gray area And are you going to tie hands of, of urban homeowners? Yeah. And how? You're, you're, you're going to have to push back. Yeah. You tell them they can't burn the bro. I, I agree with the sentiment of what's presented. The wording's what we got to work on. Yeah. That, that's where... That's my personal opinion on it. You know, I noticed the other day they're building out there by the church. Mm -hmm. They're building two. Those fires that they where the burn ups, yep. they're not very big. They're small. Well, they're, they just, you know, I go by every day, they'd be a different place. They're burning one, but it's just a small pile. It ain't big. No great big fire. It is, but honestly, when it comes down to it, it's what they're putting in the fire. And technically, so, by state law, they're not supposed see, to be doing it. And what it is, is that, like, if you get a sheet of OSB, it's the glue, it's the polymers that's mixed with the wood chips that makes it hard, that is the problem. It's the yeah. fumes from that. It's not the wood. It's the it's stuff the mixed plastics with. they're burning. I mean, and from a fire standpoint, nowadays that everybody's got a cell phone, mm -hmm. everybody that passes by it sees it and thinks there is a out of control fire. So once called, we have to respond. We can't ignore um, yeah. the calls that come in. Every house that's been built in Hickory Ridge, as long as I've, you know, for the eight years I've lived there now, every one of those houses had a debris fire in the front yard and there was nobody watching it. They're just no. every now and then you throwing their scraps on it. Interesting. Doing no. what they were doing, mm -hmm. build it. The same thing applies for my neighborhood, with the exception of the last two, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, I look down there, they're building another one down there in that bottom. Mm -hmm. Makes some sense to me, but um, there's building another one in that bottom, but lo and behold, there's a dumpster. Big mm -hmm. construction dumpster sitting there. And they're not going to burn. And, and there is something that can be said, well, if we don't let them burn and they have to throw it in a dumpster, well, then that's... I, and I don't see our dumpster program for the county being a profitable thing. I think it's just a break-even thing for the county. It's a hassle. Because they still have to take it to Smith County to dump it. So, Yeah, the roll-off thing is a big contention. Yeah. So I, I, so I, uh, yeah. So it brings me right back around to the... I, I understand the intent, but... Okay, so we do this and we ban commercial fires, open burns. One the state already does, we're just enforcing it in the county. I get that. But then they're going to have to put it in dumpsters. And that's going to cost the county some revenue having to dispose of that. So there's more um, entrepreneurs that are now coming through and having their own roll-off dumpster services that they offer. Yeah, no. Because, right. mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. if I'm mistaken, the county limits how much construction debris you can bring to the dump. Totally. 
So, well, and, you know, and again, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to put this, I don't <laughs> condone the little construction fires, nor do I, yeah, you know, I don't champion for that cause, but I will tell you that <laughs> seeing these, this, this, these people, these builders mm -hmm. and our neighborhood bringing in roll off dusters. Yeah. I'm like, wow, the, these particular them. people have dealt with other municipalities, most, you know, and they yeah. just assume, must be just assuming that. Yeah. They have. And that's the point in homes when they came in, we started running into some of that. They were expecting certain things because they're a national builder and they still did some of those things, but then there was, oh, we don't have to do that. So, and I get rules are in place yeah. to keep order because if you give some people an inch, you're going to take five miles and just have to understand that's human nature. That's how it's going to go. I understand these rules are in place. Um, so with the permission of this committee, what I'd like to do is next month, see if I can get Cliff to come in and um, talk to him about what, as far as the debris. Them facilitating the permitting process and what can be hauled yeah. in. And, and if we're going to ban them from disposing of it through incineration, how's that going to affect the county? And let's look at this from a, an overall perspective. Um, you know, we all seem to be in, the, like I said, the, the intent we all seem to agree on. Um, if we can work on the wording a little bit, maybe on your end, to try to, I, like I said, I understand the, the format. There's got to be a better way because you know as well as I as the rest of us, Mark. They're going to read that first paragraph, and they're never going to read the rest of it. Can I ask a question about the paragraph? Yes, sir. Is is the concern that it mentions trees, limbs, leaves, brush, and grass? It, it's the no person shall, and right. then listing all of that. Right, but I'm, I mean, because they're going to instantly read. You mean I can't burn my leaves? That's that's where I'm going. Yeah. If, is it that part of the paragraph that's the problem? Flammables, combustibles, wood scraps, materials from construction or salvage operations. I that shouldn't mean, that shouldn't be a problem. Refuse, garbage, or trade waste shouldn't be a problem. So if we if we strike those parts of the paragraph out, does the rest of it survive? If you take trees, limbs, leaves, brush, and grass out. Yeah, I think that kind of fixes the, the, the that'll the that'll that'll be the biggest hurdle that you will yeah. lower. Because because then you are talking about you know flammables, combustibles, wood scrap. You're talking about stuff the state already bans from an EPA standard, just from clean air. So we're not we're not creating anything new. You know, even pressure treated lumber. But yeah. you know, with the formaldehyde, it's so caustic. You know, you can't even burn that. And I get it, you know, it shouldn't be, you know. But um, yeah, I, and I agree with you, Rick. If we strike those things from that and then add a, uh, you know, uh, in between, you know, slide them all down and, you know, add, make a number seven and, you know, or a number between five and six, add another, and then include those by permit only. Yeah, I can see that. I think the, the wording in the very beginning is just very like so called Go very legalistic. Well, yes. But when you it, when you take people. when you take trees, limbs, leaves, brush, and grass, We're, out of that, now that it's falling back on state. At that point. now the state already tells you you can't burn them. And you can even add that vernacular in the state of Tennessee, no person should. Instead of Travel County. We're not trying to make ourselves in place of judge and jury. This is a statement it's as mandated by the state of Tennessee. No person shall cause something like this burning of refuse. Well, and where we uh, where we extracted that from was city right. If you'll flip and look at their example, yeah. their their number one is our number one, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But, but if you, you, if you were to, I'm sorry, if you were to cite what statute that comes from in there as you, and then include that, but remove those, and then make those. Drop them down below number five and put them by permit only. Then that will all of a sudden ease a lot of the mines. And the, the open burning is restricted. Why, why does it have to be there once you're saying it? It's restricted as follows.
Yeah. Yeah. That's more of just a, a structure of the, the document kind of thing. I think that we can. I think we can. We can, we can <laughs> manipulate this a bit to where it gets the point across without coming across so legalistic that people just completely just shut off. Sure. Yeah. Because there has been so much talk about overreach, overreach. Boy, this that kind of, true. And this, this can kind of become that something that way. I mean, you can yeah. look through the other municipalities and it becomes very restrictive. And if I want to trim, like you said, if I want to trim my bushes and throw them in my fire pit, it's it's not open. That's a confined area. See, I'm on top of a to. solid rock bluff yeah. in the back of my it's all just rock back there. There's not even any dirt on it. Well, then technically that is a confined area. On the main use of not to go around that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I'm like, oh, how many rocks up there? <laughs> my brain, too. We take them out ground every day. Oh, should I go? Oh, my, my. They're nice and I'll pretty just... and rain. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll just start going to go with Just dance around it. It's a ceremonial thing. You'll be fine. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I think that's some very good suggestions. Um, for Mark, if you want to take, you and Rick kind of take some of that back and put the Try to massage that while the rest of us can kind of be thinking of, you know, like I said, we'll get Cliff in here next month and, and talk and if about there are lesson. other aspects that you want us to reword, please let us know and um, we'll try to bring something back. On a side note, real quick, as of this weekend, I'll be out of the country until May 6th. Um, I'll have access to email and some limited, or I should have. I worked out my deal with AT&T, so I should have cell phone and messaging services as well that I'm going to be, you know, Ireland, Scotland, England, uh, Germany, Norway, or Oslo, and uh, Netherlands. I've got nine shows over there also out, so I'll be gone. Um, but I am back on the 6th. I don't foresee us having meetings. We are not having meetings until end of May, so, or into May. Yeah. So I'm, I've got your schedule. We'll, we'll work around it. Um, like I said, I got to find out when I have to work around Cliff's schedule too. And and Rick's uh, May, you'll be back from Augusta. So somewhere, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get here, Rick. Yeah. I'll be fine. You need to be careful. A lot going on in the world. There is. All right. So <laughs> under other, um, two things that have come up. Um, one, I'd like to. Um, just a little open discussion that just came up um, in this week, and Rosalie can kind of expound on it. I think Rick, you have a little bit on this too. So um, there's a farm up 141 that is wanting to open a butcher's uh, meat processing for their own cattle and pigs, I believe, but meat processing on their, their farm. Um, right now, county ordinance says you can't have meat processing outside the city limits. You can't have it in the, the rural. It's into. It is, it's it is in into. In our, our county okay. um, come to find out, the state passed a law saying that it's agricultural use. You most certainly can do it for your own cows on your property. So our ordinance is a little out of date. And Talking with Rosalie, I think we need to to kind of get caught up with what the state law says because well we're not quite there. Um, I want to know what we can't contradict what the state says, so yeah, yeah. we do need to clean that up. Yeah. That's saying I looked at my house mm -hmm. at my house mm -hmm. full of meat. Yes, well no, you can sell it out oh. as an agricultural Which just like you do any other your cows at your place. You're not yeah. you're, you're not, not doing, doing someone else's hire. cows. Yeah. You're not doing it for hire. Yes, commercial meat packing has its own separate. And sometimes people kill hogs. Mm -hmm. They all, all the neighbors come together and have hogs kill yeah. yeah, I remember those days. So I'm just wondering. Twenty twenty four, you can't do that. Anymore. <laughs> I was just wondering what the the will of this body was as far as taking that up, or we just leave that as part of the cleaning up of our ordinances as we're going through this. Honestly, it sounds like it's going to be part of the cleanup. Because I'm sure that's not the only one that's out of date at this point. Well, there's a, a fine line 
really on what is classified as a farm. And basically that is, you know, Tennessee is promoting the farm and uh, what is called uh, agritourism and things of that nature. So I get multiple calls from people that have bought five acres and it's zoned A1. Well, they think that they're not supposed to have to go by our zoning ordinances when in fact, yes, they need to go by our zoning ordinances. It's those that are really classified as a farm by definition from the state of Tennessee. And that being, that's kind of already defined to um, like the election mission. Um, if you have 15 acres and it's zoned A1 and you have gotten the green belt uh, tax credit, then you are classified as farm. And with that, um, there's certain um, things that you're able to do, like you don't have to get a permit to build a farm because it's incidental to the farming operations. Um, with agricultural um, farm operations, you're allowed to have more than one uh, living structure on the property, provided that someone from your immediate family lives in there or uh, farm workers that help you take care of your farm. So there's different things that you're allowed to do. So what um, David was referencing is that they are going to be building a slaughterhouse. And there were certain stipulations that go along with that is that it, the property couldn't necessarily um, be along a state fairly, like a federal state, a highway, things of that nature, or they couldn't necessarily have it in a flood zone. So, and those things have been identified and they are able to do their, their slaughterhouse. Um, but as far as others having their agricultural property, I, I think we need to be careful on how we update our ordinances to reflect that because I have gotten calls, people, uh, well, I don't have to get a building permit for my house, do I? Because a house is incidental to the farming operation. Well, technically, you're, you're, not a, you're, you're, you're not classified as a farm. So, does this uh, small house, you know, does it have to be USDA approved? They're going to sell it. They and they they have done their due diligence. They have gone through the USDA and through the state as well, and so they are certified through them, so they can do their own. How many state. acres they got? Over a hundred. Okay, and, and I'm not bringing it up to to cast any shade or, or you know dissent on that particular project. My point was when Rosalie brought it up to me is, oh wait. Well, we, we've got this statement in, in our zoning, then we need to correct that, it is where I was coming from, because we're now contradicting the state. And, and we cannot do that. And we can't do that. And as the state has been updating their you know, legislation, we don't really do that here. We just create a different ordinance and just keep right on going. We don't really go back and look, you know. Yeah, some of the old stuff's got to be repealed and modified. Yes. Yeah. And so, as we're already cleaning up things, um, and I don't know how much extra work that throws on you, but I mean, I think this is a good time to be cleaning up those things and, and stating why that was changed and why that was removed because of state law, so and so. And we're just cleaning up and fixing some, doing some housekeeping, lack of a better term. Does anyone else have anything else that they'd like to bring forward? How are things going in your office? Swamp is it very good? Very good word. Um, I am running out of room. It's hard to keep anything organized. I get calls uh, from people wanting to look at plaques of subdivisions or division of property, and I have no room to even get that organized and stored. So I know at one time there was talk of moving that office um, well, to the spot for a reader was um and I've, I've asked those questions but nothing has really come to fruition about that um the permitting software that is moving along we tend to be a little um 
there's more steps in our permitting process than some counties. And so it's taking us a little bit longer because we are fleshing everything out and making sure that all our I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Um, we had talked last time about the uh, the blasting permit being included into the permitting software. They have done that uh, from what we've had. And so that is also going to be an option for people to go on there and uh, you know, do that online and then you would validate all of that information before issuing the blasting permit. Um, we have issued maybe 60, 70 permits so far this year, which is since January. So we are That's substantial. Still, it is very substantial. And they're not small buildings. They're larger buildings. A lot of, um, well, not a lot, but several of the commercial um, entities that have received their site plan approval have come and pulled their uh, permit. Dollar Tree, for one, has pulled their permit. Um, other projects have been coming forward and bringing plans by the office for me to do like a plan review to see, you know, are they going to need codes, things of that nature. Um, so, quite a bit coming down the pike. Um, that being said, we are looking at budget season coming up, and I think the county's kind of been taking advantage of one person in a position that was held by two and had been looking at moving to a third person. Um, when it got reduced back down to one. Um, I don't know what we can do as a committee on that as far as talking with budget and finance to let them know the help them understand some of the issues. But I don't think most of the commission understands exactly what that department does. And it's quite a bit for one person to stay on top of. A lot of the amount of money that they generate. They generate. Yeah. She generates. She generates a um, I believe what it was two and a half or three times what your expenses are is what you're generating with just permitting. Indeed, um, every year for the last three to four years, the profit above the budget and expenses has been over two hundred thousand dollars a year. Make a nice payment on our jail towards a jail anyway. So I would hate. I know at one point it was discussed of just shipping everything, all the inspections to the state. Um, I think that's going to be financially, that'd be a detriment to the county. Yeah. Um, also, as we found, the state has helped us out. A lot of that help has run out. And so we, we're to a point now that we're going to have to do something with that department. And we're the oversight of that department. Um, so I need, I need y'all to all be thinking about that. And, uh, as we get a little closer to the budget time of kind of right, the next one. yeah if there's any right. any information that we can yeah. pass okay. forward or uh, i just know that for whatever reason and i do understand complications mm -hmm. when i say this to preface that we do have a person in the county that's qualified to do inspections as needed on, on a uh, part-time basis or whatever and is driving to hole and wall and all over the state to do it, but not here. You know, I didn't know if that was a resource that we were going to continue to overlook or uh, not a, not as the sole, but on a, you know on an overflow or something. I don't know. As needed, as needed sort of basis. I don't know. I don't need. I mean, two and three hour drive to do, to do things because it gets called by the state to do one of these things, and they keep asking. I don't know, not out there. So, dude, I don't know. I, I don't. Anything else? Then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. You got it. Okay. All in favor? Uh, All right. It's not negotiable. <laughs>